doing before I install the exhaust uh, setup uh, header is I am I'm filing the header flanges because um, you can see maybe in the light, let me point this out real quick. Um, you can see in the light here how the file is working this edge here, but it hasn't really uh, touched this inner edge here. See the difference in the grain? Uh, same over here, the file is working this outer edge when it's ran across here. I don't really care about this very outside edge, just the pattern, just the pattern that the exhaust, um, the gasket actually makes and the surface that it contacts. Um, you can see the outer edge is a little bit unaffected, but these, see the overlap there? But um, this inner surface here, I want to be real nice and true in one flat plane so I can get good, good contact, a good crush of the gasket, and therefore no exhaust leaks. So I'm just taking the file and I'm gently applying uh, even pressure here I don't know if I could do this one-handed, but I'm running it over like this just gently. Just gently, and it's finding the high spots. This isn't really mimicking what I'm doing, but I'm basically running a file uh, over the surface till I get a smooth surface. So <clears throat> you might have uh, been wondering, how do I know when my, my exhaust uh, header flanges are are flat and true and ready to install. Well, um, I like to color the flange with like a black or blue dry erase marker. Uh, like you see here, this has been all colored in. And I like to uh, file until um, it's completely smooth like this. And all the places I have colored, all the ceiling surfaces are uniformly um, filed down and there is no black or blue marker left. So uh, you can compare this side to this side. Um, see the detail, Let's see if I can shade this. There you go, that's a little better. Uh, the glare from the <laughs> fluorescent lighting was throwing it off, but so you can see this area where I filed here, it's really shiny. And the black area represents the area that's not flat and true yet. So yeah, one could make the argument that this is gonna make a decent seal because um, there's a complete ring around the, um, uh, diameter of the exhaust tubing on the flange. Yeah, you know, it's it's probably going to seal okay, but I would much rather um, see this as the uh, the ready-to-go sealing surface. See the difference? See how, see how um, uniform and flat and true this surface is? I'd rather see that than uh, just this small, unforgiving surface here. I'm at the point where I am uh, taping up the surfaces I don't want to be painted um, here. I've picked up some paint. I'll show you in a minute, but it's a um, high temperature uh, barbecue stove exhaust uh, system paint that I think is rated up to somewhere around 1200 degrees. That should be uh, okay for what we're doing here. We're uh, painting in general, but I'm going to take a little razor blade and I'm going to um, cut around here. It's kind of satisfying to watch because um, let's see, I can cut here and leave only the surface taped that I don't want to be painted. That's kind of cool. Thought I'd show you some neat little trick that I've been shown before. It nice to pass on. Kind of want to work the razor blade around the perimeter of the flange and that will give you your nice cut this works best with a new <laughs> a new razor blade so you're not like struggling struggling through the cut it just kind of effortlessly cuts through and here we go um, what that leaves you with is a nice surface I'll lift it up here so you can see but a nice surface that's painted and sealed off so that you don't have to scrape and grind paint um, 
I'm going to touch the edges here. I'm trying to keep my hands off of the paint that, or the surface because I don't want to um, get too many of my hand oils. Oil from your hands on there can cause problems with paint. So, oh, I think, I think I hear the sun awake. Maybe it's time to check on them. So I'm going to take a break, uh, go visit the happy sun. <laughs> I think he's getting in a cold pool. Who likes that? And I'll catch up with you in a little bit. All right, it's getting pretty hot here in the workshop, so I'm gonna uh, throw a suit on and take a dip in the pool. But before I did, I wanted to show you, I just had an idea here that's kind of worth mentioning. Um, decided that to make it easier for painting, I'm gonna go ahead and um, set these individual on top of a ladder or a table uh, that I can get probably a ladder and maybe throw a strap around it so it doesn't get knocked off. But what I did is I actually, um, you see here I used a little <clears throat> flange screw to hold the header to this piece of pressure treated wood. So basically um, I've got a nice base for painting. There's probably gonna be a couple areas where I'm gonna have to maybe get in the nooks and crannies, maybe from the back side. Over here, uh, I can get in, you know, kind of like this, this direction, but I did the same thing with the stinger. Long, long live the stinger. So you can see I attached this to a block of wood here and I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to do some painting, but I think I'm going to wait till this evening because it's super hot right now and I'm still actually debating. Um, I'll show you. This is the paint I got, um, oops, but um, it's a Rust-Oleum product, high heat for like barbecues and stuff, up to 1200 degrees it says somewhere, somewhere here, ah, yeah, right here, Zoop. resists heat. Notice the clever word, resists, it's not heat proof, but anyway, it's better than nothing, so, um, it doesn't say to like preheat the steel. I've heard some guys say on like hot rod forums say that they um, heat the steel up artificially with a propane torch. Kind of like um, what I have over here. Just zoom in on it. So I've heard some guys say they use a torch like that to um, heat things up and then apply the paint and then, and then let it flash and then heat it again with a torch to help cure it. This paint right here says nothing about that. So, I don't know, for my, for my first trial, I, I might heat it up a little bit, but nothing nothing excessive. So, I'm gonna paint and then I'll be back. All right, so this also falls again under the category. I'm not really sure as to how effective it is. I'm guessing some people might say this heat uh, treating process takes place naturally when you fit the exhaust to the vehicle thus rendering this step useless, but I've also heard people do it and it uh, makes a difference in the durability of the paint. So, without further ado, oh, uh, use safety, safety first. Uh, do not burn things down that are not meant to be burned down. So, uh, this situation is fully under control. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. I feel like this should be like a trophy, at a drag race or something. One of those really old telephones that you pick up the little cord and with a earpiece on it and lean into this. Anyway, that's what you get. You can see the header in the background. So I'm gonna let this chill overnight and, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and install it. So install both pieces. Um, probably tomorrow night. I don't know, see how hot it is. It's supposed to be 105 tomorrow, so maybe not. But anyway, thanks again, and uh, we'll keep this going here uh, again soon.